Great to have you back. And if this is your first time here, better yet. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Tuesday, September 6th. No, you didn't miss Monday. We had the long weekend, remember? Did you enjoy it? I know I did. Problem is, now we've got a shorter trading week. Got to take the bad with the good. So we've got a ritual here on this show. Every day we like to look at OTC and penny stocks. That's just the way we roll. I'm looking for stocks as I'm day trading every day that I can share with you. Stocks we need to be considering. Maybe they were running today and are going to continue on. So we hope. Or maybe there's just great technicals on the charts and they look like they're about ready to rip. Or easier yet, maybe there's just some hot news. Now, this is some excellent news I've been reading over the last four or five days. You got your oldest news up at the top, your newest news down here at the bottom. Now, this is all OTC news. Now, they're penny stocks, but penny stocks can be on any exchange. Any stock under $5 qualifies as a penny stock. Doesn't matter where it is traded. So we could easily be looking at some major exchange stocks too. Now, right now, we are over here at the otcmarkets.com website. This is where I always start when I do research on an OTC stock, without fail. For one reason, it's updated every day by Fiener and the SEC. Why go searching for information when you know where it's at? And if by chance you can't find what you're looking for, well, the whole big internet is out there still waiting for you to comb over it. So start here. It'll save you a lot of hassle. It'll save you a lot of time. So let's take a look at how our OTC market finished today. Doesn't look a whole lot better. We had a little improvement on our dollar volume. We jumped from 1.6 to 1.9 billion. That's a wee bit of improvement, though our average is 2.1. Share volume, bloody hell, we can't stay over 10 billion. I would like to stay over 10 billion for a whole week. We just can't do that. We just keep bouncing back and forth. Trades, well, that's gone up. 250,000 is our normal average. We're getting close to 300,000, which used to be our average. So no, not a whole lot going on here right now. However, there are still stocks on the market trading and trading hot. And I got some real interesting ones today that are involved in deals, acquisitions. There's just lots of goodies out there. So let me show you what I got in my basket. Now, there's a good chance you've heard of this stock before. This is ticker RSHN Rush Net Inc. She finished today at 0.0021 with about 13.5% gains. She's on the pink tier. She is current. She's got those green ticks I'm always telling you to look for. Verified profile, transfer agent verified. They're important, so this looks good. Now, RushNet, not too long ago, they acquired two subsidiaries, which is their primary business. They have Helios DX, which is a national clinical laboratory that provides test kits. They have tests for urine drug testing, behavioral drug testing, allergy droplet cards, oral fluids, infectious diseases. Here recently, they came out with a test from monkeypox, so that's the sort of stuff that they're doing. The other subsidiary they got was Grandiza Health. They're more of the paperwork, the billing, all that sort of stuff. Now, it wasn't too long ago that RushNet came out and told us that they were going to spin Helios DX out onto the NASDAQ, which is exciting for any shareholders of RushNet because they're going to get dividends in that company. And that has been something we've been watching. Well, here, just a few days ago, they came out with an update about that spin out, and it's looking even better. And I think that's why everyone is starting to look at it now. I know that's why we're looking at it now. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Yeah, she's normally doing 45 million, really good. Today she did about 50% more, about 63 million. Share structure, we're hoping for a small float. Well, there goes that. <laughs> no hope here. No, she's a wee bit bigger than I was hoping for. 7.6 billion shares. So it's a mighty big float. Financials. What is RushNet doing in capital? Hey, they're making some good money. At the end of last year, we were at 5.8 million. And look, they got to keep 4.1 million. So they've got a nice system going there. Quarterly. They're doing, whoa, they did almost 2 million this last quarter in June, which was a pretty big jump from the first quarter. And uh, profits were way up as well. So everything is looking good on the financial side for RushNet. Disclosures. Well, we know all of their financials are on time. Nothing interesting there. And nothing since June. So let's jump on over to that news. Now, if we look at the news going back to May, 
We read here that RushNet announces debt restructuring to greatly increase profitability and cash flow. Well, we just got done looking at their financials. And from the first quarter of this year to the second quarter of this year, there was a big jump in revenues and a big jump in profitability. So obviously, this was a good move for them. And I'm actually bringing it up right now because they do talk about this in the update we're going to take a look at. Then here in June, RushNet pursues spin out of Helios DX. Ding, ding, ding. Dividend. Everybody loves those dividends. Now that was three months ago. We've been waiting for this uplisting to happen, but it hasn't happened yet. So this update is highly anticipated. Everybody is eager to get some information and it's pretty good information. Then their last three news presses before the one we're going to look at were all about monkeypox. And you know that had the charts ripping. They were bouncing up and down on this news. Then on the second of this month, we get this news, adjusting business structure in preparation for the spin out of Helios DX. Now they tell us in here that RushNet is pleased to announce that Helios DX will absorb Grandiza Healthcare in preparation for the spin out from RushNet. We're getting a twofer. Two for one. They're going to put both companies together and spin them out. And that's everything. All their monies, all their liabilities, finances, everything, which is obviously going to change the dividend and the value of the company. They go on to tell us that in preparation for the spin out of Helios DX from RushNet, it has been determined that the best course of action for Helios DX is to absorb Grandiza Healthcare back into the business. As of October 1st, 2022, Grandiza Healthcare will be completely rolled into Helios DX to include all income, assets, liabilities, personal, and services. It is evident that this will benefit both RushNet and Helios DX by streamlining operations and reducing costs. RushNet will remain a publicly traded company, which is pink current, clean, audited and ready for the next venture which will be publicly announced in the coming months. Helios DX upon spinoff will have a foundation, a float of approximately 13,000 shares which will be freely tradable and considered the float. Yeah, I just said that. RushNet has also submitted payment to Nevada to clear up back taxes of approximately $43,000. This clears the path along with multiple corporate actions for swift, expeditious approval of the spinoff and the dividend. And they don't give us any information about that dividend. So there's a lot of excitement now. We're building up this spinoff to a bigger spinoff. It's just not one company. It's two companies rolled into one, going to have more value. And you're still going to get your dividend. We don't have a date that hasn't been given to us yet either, but just the news itself has got people excited. And that was on the second, and this is the sixth. Let's go take a look at that chart. So this is ticker RSHN, RushNet Inc. We are doing our charting on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. If you like it, just mosey on over to TD Ameritrade, sign up for their free trading account, and voila, you got yourself a free trading platform to use anytime you like. So our six month, four hour chart here has got me a little confused. It's bass backwards. <laughs> we got a low bubble in this corner. This is triple zero five and this high bubble on the top of this tree is double zero three five. She has been running uphill all this time, bouncing off of that trend line with some big bounces in here. And she had a huge surge today without any catalyst, more like preparation. Remember, this is all about the spin out. It seems to me what they've really done here, RushNet has merged two companies together, Grandiza and Helios DX. And now they're going to spin out this bigger company onto the NASDAQ, which is worth more, and the dividends, the stock is going to be worth more. So it's a great deal all the way around. So we're not looking for a run tomorrow or a continuation. We're looking for getting a good entry price so that we can get those free shares in this bigger company. Technicals, looking great. Our PPO, which is a lot like the MACD, MACD works with the price of the stock. PPO works with the percentage of the price. That's why it's called percentage price oscillator. Our RSI hit the overbought and has had a little pullback. And our ADX looks grand. What this is, is it shows you trend continuation. Forget about which direction this red line is going. All you want to see is, is it going the same direction? If this changes, the trend changes. Well, what's our trend been? Well, it's been for the last three days climbing up. So that's a straight line while it's climbing. 
When this starts to drop, that's going to start dropping. It's going to change direction. So everything looks perfect right now. Let's take a look at that 20-day, one-hour view. Lots of activity back here in August. This is when all that monkeypox news was coming out. I told you there was a lot of activity around that news, but it all fell away. Look at this. We had a low bubble right there of 0013, and we tapped it again over and over and over here. Pushed ourselves up and fell back down to the 200-day SMA, crawled across that for a while, and the last few days we have been pushing up. We've got a pullback right now, and that's what the technical show. Half the day was strong, and the other half was weak. Taking a look at that five-day, five-minute. So, not a whole lot going on until these last two days. Actually, maybe even three. We came out from underneath everything and got up on top of the 200. Didn't stay there, but she got back on top right at the end of the day, two days ago. Then on Friday, she started to actually rise up. Seems to be bouncing off of this 20-day SMA. And bouncing is what she does, doesn't she? Up, boom, down. Up, boom, down. She does like to do a lot of bouncing. She started here at uh, 0018 and got up to 0029, so 18 to 29. You're looking at roughly 30, 35% gains at her high. She then fell back. Let's draw our lines in here. Let me get my money line. I'd like to draw a line here at the bottom of the surge where it began, right there, and one here at the top, normally the high bubble. And then split it in the middle, right? And if it stays above this, halfway point that means it's kept 50 percent i can see i'm a little low there and if it's below it it's pretty weak right now we are below it now it doesn't matter if it's on the top or the bottom as long as it's on the line on one side or the other but this is getting too far away and when it starts to dribble down like that that's normally what happens it dribbles right back down to the strongest sma so it could easily come back down here to the 200, which would be a great buy-in price. We don't want it to run right now. We want to get a great buy-in price. Technicals, they are falling away right now. Everything looks like it's still falling. So I would almost count on it to come down here to 0 0.0019, and it may even dip a little bit lower than that, which is okay because we're looking to get a good price. Now, when you buy into these sort of stocks, since we don't know when the catalyst is going to come, you don't know if the stock's going to go up or down, down even lower. So don't buy everything all at once. Know how much you want to buy, $1,000 or 1,000 shares, whatever it is. And buy a portion. When you get a price that appeals to you, maybe buy 30%, 25%, or 20%. If it falls, you're not going to feel bad. Because you've only bought one-fourth, one-fifth of what you were planning on buying. And now you can buy it at a better price. And by the time it starts to run, when the news comes out, when they finally spin it out, you're going to have a better price than your original buy because you played the market and got yourself some deals and averaged down. So, RSHN. You want to watch for news and filings coming out in this company about that spin out of Helios DX and Grandiza Health. It's going to be big. We're now going to the major exchange. We're going to look at a penny stock on the NASDAQ. This is ticker SPRO, Spiro Therapeutics. Finished the day at $1.13 with about 55% gains. Now, this is a biotech company. They create medicines and medications. They're on the NASDAQ, so they're doing business, and they have lots of medicines in the pipeline right now and all different types of phase trials. They are working with lots of different companies, including Pfizer. They get royalties for some of the drugs that they've got out there right now, so they're doing a lot of business making money. They just had an 8K come out today, which was actually shining some brilliant light on some bad, bad news that came out in May. They had failed a phase three trial on one of their drugs and the price of this stock plummeted. Well, today, the 8K has good news about that situation and it has got people excited. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Well, she's normally only doing 209,000 shares. Today, she did almost 80 million. Folks, that's like 400 times her normal volume. Boom, share structure. All right, I could not find the float. It's funny, in 10Ks and 10Qs, you normally can't find the public float. You can find the outstanding, but not the float. So I'm not real sure what it is. However, we do know the float is under 32 million. That's the outstanding. So it's going to be a nice low float. Not super duper low, but that is a brilliant float. Financials, what sort of money are they making? 
Not bad money. Remembering those three zeros up here, we got 18 million at the end of 2021, which is double what they did in 2020. But that was half of what they did in 2019. And quarterly, what sort of money are they making every three months? About $2 million every three months. Now, what catches my attention here is the cost of revenue. It's nothing. They're not paying anything. So I doubt they are buying ingredients to make medicines or packaging it or distributing it. This is probably coming from royalties or something like that. But however they're making their money, it's consistent and they're making a few million and not having to give any of it away. Disclosures. All right, we got two disclosures here that we need to take a look at. We got the 8K that came out today, which is the good news, but we got the bad news that came out, and they do talk about it here in the 10Q. So I'm going to jump into that. So I've scrolled right on down in this 10K to where we need to go, and this is the bad news. This is why the stock dropped so hard this day. On May 3rd, 2022, the company announced that it suspended current commercialization activities for their drug, Tebpenem HBR, based on the feedback of a late cycle meeting with the Food and Drug Administration regarding their NDA, new drug application. On June 27th, the company announced that it received a complete response letter from the FDA about their NDA for their new drug. The FDA ultimately concluded that the phase three complicated urinary tract infection clinical trial for their drug was insufficient to support approval and that additional clinical study would be required. On August 2nd, the company held a type A meeting with FDA to gain further insights to the pathway forward towards the potential regulatory approval for the drug. The company expects to receive written minutes during the third quarter of 2022. And that's what the 8K is for today. They tell us here on September 6th, Spiro Therapeutics issued a press release announcing an update on its drug program following the receipt of minutes from the recent type A meeting with the FDA discussing steps required for resubmission of the new drug application for the drug for the treatment of complicated urinary tract infection, including pyloneitis. Now here's where the news gets good. During the type A meeting, the FDA indicated that positive results from a single additional phase three clinical trial supported by confirmatory non-clinical evidence of efficacy could be sufficient, could be enough to support the approval of the drug for the treatment of urinary tract infection. Spiro plans to advance the drug's clinical development and potential commercialization through external partnership. And if approved, the drug would be the first oral carpobanum antibiotic to receive marketing approval in the United States. Folks, this is all good news. They're back to commercializing it. That was the first thing they said. We are suppressing all of our commercialization. We're not going to do it anymore. Now they are. They're looking for a partnership, a deal. The FDA has given them an opportunity now through a single additional phase trial. They don't have to get a whole bunch of people and run it for months and months. All they need is one more individual trial that proves righteous and things are going to be on track here again. So this company looks good. It is speculation, but that's what a lot of our trades are about. Let's go take a look at that chart. What a wild chart for SPRO. That's a six month, four hour chart. We got a high bubble here tapping the 200 at $16.81. Then we got a low bubble about a month ago of 68 cents. Now right here, right there is our drop on May 2nd, May 3rd, almost an 80% drop from just a little over $5 to just over a buck. It was huge and you can see these lines coming together, the red line and the blue line from my PPO. When lines come together, the price is falling. When lines go apart, price is going up. Price went up a little bit right there, but nothing to really talk about. She's been going sideways most of this time until the 200 got close enough to make a dive at it. And it's been fighting to stay over the 200, but it looks like it was losing the battle just before this 8K came out and saved its arse. Technicals are strong. Our PPO has got a crossover right there pointing up. Trend is continuing on. MACD over the signal line pushing up and the RSI is pushing towards overbought. And the volume, well, geez, there's nothing to compare. I can't even see any other volume here. Today's volume was hefty. 20 day, one hour view. 
Not a lot going on. She's been staying above the 200 until these last couple of days, for whatever reason, hit a low bubble here on this time frame and is bouncing off of that with the help of the 8K. Had a huge jump here, jumped from, well, the low of 71 cents up to $1.90. You're looking at almost 150% jump and then a huge fall and it looks like it's actually climbing after market hours. Technicals show exactly all that. A strong day, a pullback, and it looks like a recovery going on right now. Let's take a look at that five day, five minute. Looks like she's still trading. After market hours, we may see things change while we're looking at it. She had a great day after many days of nothing. Hit that low bubble. Uh, 8 o'clock in the morning, she was trading pre-market and took off and finished at about 1.30 in the afternoon at her high. And it was falling all the rest of the day and finished down here at about a buck 11. Fell some more after market and right now she's on a recovery. Look at this nice churn, nice beautiful curve. Everything is going green. We got a nice crossover there on the PPO. That looks great. Uh, MACD has just hit the signal line and about ready to cross over. We could use a little more RSI, but it is after market. You're not going to get a whole lot of RSI after market, but you could. You absolutely could. Fiam was real strong, strongest in the middle of the day, actually, right in here. And she is tapered off right now. But everything actually looks good. Now, I don't really play a lot of pharmaceutical companies, biotechs, biopharmas. They're just not my bag. There's normally a lot of wait time. But this is pretty exciting news. And if they come up with a news press to follow up on this, I don't know what could happen. But she had a good run and then a hard fall. She could get another run out of her. I keep my eye on her. Like I said, pharmaceutical companies aren't my thing. But if they're going to make you money, yeah, they're my thing today. This next stock was a big runner today, had big news, but the news had very little to say. Left a lot to the imagination, but she still had a hot run. This is ticker ABQQ, AB International Group, finished the day at 0 .008, over 116%. They're on the pink tier, they're current, and they've got those green ticks I'm always telling you to look for, so it looks good. Now, they tell us down here that AB International Group is an intellectual property and movie investment and licensing firm focused on acquisitions and development of various intellectual properties. Uh, they have just opened up their first movie house. They say here in the description that they're working on it, but I've seen pictures of it. Looks like it's open to me. And they are also targeting the multi-billion dollar growing video streaming industry. The online service will be marketed and distributed in the world under the brand name ABQQ TV. So what was the relative volume today around that news? Well, she's normally doing 4.6 million, so that's a huge increase to 141 million. Lots of attention being shown to this stock today. Share structure, eh, average. It's not low, it's not high. 273 million. Financials, what kind of money is this company bringing in? All right, I see they do their annuals on the eighth month of the month. So last year they finished at $115,000 and were in big debt, 1.3 million. What about quarterly? Getting any better? Well, the first quarter was good. Holy cow, they did $1.8 million, got to keep $1.1 million. But now they're back down to a quarter million dollars for the last quarter, and they're half a million dollars in debt. Whew. I hope the big news today actually helps the revenues. Disclosures. Anything new over here? 8K, oh, that's over a month ago, and an effect uh, that is a week ago, really not what we're interested in looking at, but the news is. So the news that came out today, 9-6, right there, AB International Group announces it signs master license agreement with Universal Studios. Yes, it is the same one you're thinking about. So jumping into that news, this is all the news right there. From here down, it's just a description. So this is all we got. AB International Group, an intellectual property and movie investment licensing firm, today announced it entered into a master license agreement with Universal Studios Company, Universal Film. 
regarding a theatrical exhibition of Universal Motion Pictures and or such other audiovisual content as Universal may elect to distribute, whether by film print, digital cinema package, by wireless, or other methods now known or hereafter created, each such motion picture or other audiovisual content. And this is for their cinemas in New York. And that's all the information we got, folks. I can only speculate what they're going to be doing with them. I don't know if this is movies just for their movie house or their movies for their streaming service. We don't know. We've got to wait for more information. But that's the news, and that's the run, 116%. Let's go see what that looks like on the chart. This is a six-month, four-hour chart for ABQQ. We got a high bubble back here of almost four cents, 0 0.039, and a low bubble here, what, four or five days ago of 0 0.0034. That is over a thousand percent drop. She has been under the 200 most of this time. Volume has been sporadic until today. That is humongous volume. We did look at it. We looked at it here on May 11th. Can't remember what it was about, except she ran. And you can see our bottom surge line here. That's where it's been bouncing. Bouncing for quite a while on our surge line. And then it broke it and has been falling, falling, falling. And I don't think it would have retreated. I think it would have continued falling if the news didn't come out today. Volume is real strong today. The price kicked hard. It jumped over the 50, crushed the 50-day SMA got on top of the 200 and is sitting up here now on the 200. Our technicals are crushing it. Look at the angle of that blue line going across the pink. That's virtually perpendicular. That is power. No change in direction on the ADX. MACD just crossed the signal and look at that rocket surging on the RSI. We are up at 79 all red. This looks hot folks, looks hot. Coming down to the 20 day one hour. Absolutely nothing going on for 19 days until today when she took off. Technicals are the best. You couldn't ask for anything better here. We're in the overbought at 76. Tsunami on the MACD. Direction hasn't changed on the ADX. And look at all that power on the PPO. Looks like she wants to keep going. <laughs> five day, five minute. She did have a lull. Five minute lull. Nothing happened for five minutes. I got to believe that the news came out five minutes after the bell. She took off here, and in 15 minutes, she hit her high of the day. And then she fell, bounced off of this 50, and came back up to her high. And is pretty much sitting up there right now. So if you missed your exit here, lucky you got back in here. But you did get dragged along the way. So you are tattered and torn, but here you are back where you started from. Uh, volume, it hasn't been bad. It's been there all day long. It was very strong when the news came out, but it's been healthy all day. Our SMAs are still all pointing up and looking good. Technicals look fair to strong. PPO is above the pink and has a hint of push-up. Direction hasn't changed on the ADX. Same thing with the MACD, a hint of turn up, and our RSI is pushing up. I keep my eye on ABQQ. I don't think the news today gave us enough. It gave us a lot, gave us a lot of excitement, but we don't have answers. We don't know what the deal is, what they're doing, what kind of money they're going to make, when it's going to begin. We know nothing. So I expect some news presses. And when they come out, I expect this to run. So ABQQ could continue on tomorrow. I wouldn't be surprised about that at all. But Soon as the news press comes out, I am sure ABQQ will get another good bounce. So those are three stocks in the limelight. You got RushNet, which is basically doing a merger of two companies together and then spinning it out on the NASDAQ and going to give us dividends. It's a bigger company and there's lots of news they've still got to post. Then you've got SPRO. They've got a urinary tract infection drug that was disapproved. Looks like it's probably going to get approved. They're making a deal to commercialize this. And in case you didn't see, it is the first FDA approved drug of its type that can orally be taken. And then ABQQ. Come on. Universal Studios, that is a huge name. And it didn't give us enough information. We haven't a clue what they're doing, when they're starting, how much they're making. So there's lots of news to come for that too. And DD, keeping up the news, keeping up the filings. Forget the charts. You see the chart, the news is already out. So keep your eye open. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.